Hello, I'm John Hall, a product manager at BMC working in the ITSM tooling space. But today I'm here to talk to you for our 10 minute take about how ITSM and the emergent world of DevOps can somewhat collide in the enterprise. If you've ever been to a DevOps event, you might have heard fairly negative perceptions about IT service management. Certainly I've heard many such expressions from individuals in, in the DevOps community who rightly or wrongly have seen their past experiences of IT service management and ITIL as as representing something of a of a hindrance, something that gets in the way of, of DevOps adoption. And um, there may be some truth that their experiences have been like that. But then when you start asking questions about how it goes when they are trying to grow DevOps practices in an established enterprise, you can actually find out that many of the problems they're experiencing are some of the same problems that, that IT service management has spent quite a few decades now seeking to find answers for. So today we're going to take a look at some of the ways IT service management can actually seek to provide new value and new enablement to DevOps if we are smart and if we think about the way we need to reshape and realign our practices. I think it's worth taking a very quick look at the history of DevOps, just to put this in some context. DevOps has really only been around since about 2008, and it came from small beginnings when Patrick Dubois and Andrew Schaefer effectively presented to each other in a notoriously badly attended session, which nevertheless sparked something big, because a year later, we were seeing major presentations by big organizations at DevOps Days conferences in, in Belgium. The USA started seeing its first DevOps Days conferences a few years later. And then you know, we've seen big companies like Netflix really come out over the next few years and demonstrate that they were re-architecting their entire world around these practices. There's some really uh, important books came out over these few years, such as Gene Kim's Phoenix Project, a uh, very important novella about these things. But really then, I think the main focus for us is, is the second half of the last decade when enterprises started to do this, when we started seeing DevOps emerging in major companies around the world. But there's the challenge. You know, it's, when I first went to a DevOps conference, I was talking with companies like Spotify. But in my regular day job, I'm talking with large banks, financial institutions, chemical companies, pharmaceuticals, a lot of organizations with a lot of existing complexity. Uh, and really, uh, when you, I like to use the example of changing your airline seat. You know, what, what is for the user a very simple experience on a mobile phone these days to open a small app and select a seat? is actually triggering a huge number of interactions with, so, with many different systems, old and new. So the reality of what we're dealing with in a big enterprise often looks very different to a, a startup that's been able to build from a green field on a, on a fairly homogenized set of technology. And so that creates challenges. You know, if, for example, you're working on a service desk, you may have previously had that you know, nice, steady, change-managed ITSM approach to services of old where everyone kind of knew what was coming because everything was a big project that took years. What we see in reality when companies are adopting DevOps in a big way, things happen much faster in development teams. So suddenly a service desk or an IT support organization might start hearing about something new only when the users are calling to report problems. That's something we really do see happen. Another interesting challenge, the developers involved in the DevOps movement uh, and the, the operational people are probably using different tools. They, they're using SDLC tools like JIRA and Azure DevOps. And, and actually, that, that means you know, stuff can easily get segmented away in those tools, but the customer is still calling the service desk. And it's not uncommon for service desk people to talk about it taking many days to get an update on something that a customer is still shouting about. This is also fundamentally silo building. You know, if, if we have development and operational teams working in a, in a disconnected way, you know, they've grown as a startup within the company effectively, we're not often making the best of sharing the knowledge that they're building. So if the support organization is in the dark, it can't really help them. And this is where we'll, we'll go in a, in a few slides time. And then finally, because we're often building a lot more technology in an organization that directly faces the customer, where IT service organizations 10, 15 years ago might have been predominantly focused on their own internal employees almost all the time, we're now actually pushing a lot of technology right out of the company and into the customer's hands. And that gives us a lot of interesting challenges because now we're starting to align with customer support channels. And behind the scenes, this stuff is often being built in new ways. 
So it's an interesting challenge, but that's not to say it's an easy ride for DevOps teams in the enterprise. You know, firstly, they may start small, but if their products go big, they suddenly might now be exposed to a very large user base. And some of those users will find things that are broken, and those users will engage with, will try to engage with them to get support. And it can lead to real challenges. You know, in, in the state of DevOps report in 2018, they did an analysis of how much work teams in the DevOps space were actually spending on real innovative stuff. And even in the most elite companies, the, the seven or so percent that they put into the top category, it was down to 50% because those teams were spending 20% of their time on unplanned work, 25% of their time dealing with customers and security issues and bug fixing. So all of a sudden, we're now seeing you know, the, a lot of the, the big gains of being able to deliver code quickly, deploy fast, innovate quick, innovate at a rapid pace, they start to erode if those teams are faced with a big queue of support tickets. These teams may also be focused on you know, their own technology stacks. You know, the, the, the DevOps pipeline for delivering code is probably focused on the area they're working on. We, we see a lot of talk of microservice architectures where teams have a fairly small context. But in reality, in an enterprise, that's not the way it works. As I said, that airline seat change probably interacts with 50, 60, 70 different systems inside and outside the company, old and new. It means that actually the context of any given issue might be much broader than the line of sight of any single technical team. I mentioned companies like pharmaceuticals, financial companies. There is governance. There is oversight. There is regulation. These companies cannot just do what they want fast because they will soon run into problems with people who scrutinize them. And, and so that, again, can present a real overhead to teams who just want to move quickly. The, they're also you know, potentially quite disconnected from the customer compared to the service organization. If, if you're in what's you know, a fairly standard-looking ITSM group, you're probably the ones who t talk to your users. You're probably the ones who understand the business context of those services. That, that's kind of what ITSM has spent many years honing and doing very well. It might not be the case if you're working in the technical weeds of microservice architectures, doing a very good job of what you do. But you know, the, the challenge then comes in if you've got 50 things in your queue which are innovation requests and 50 things which are customer support problems, what do you prioritize? How can you get that oversight from within a fairly narrow viewpoint of, of in, the, in the context of the enterprise, what really matters next? And so this is really what we have been working on. We, we've been out in the DevOps community here at BMC for a number of years, you know, moonlighting at conferences and meeting people and, and, and putting together, you know, work with a lot of our big customers, trying to pull together the relevant people working on both sides of what I hesitate to call the fence, but has often looked like it. Because ITSM done well does not have to be an impediment to DevOps. If we're smart, if we recognize the challenges that perhaps in the past, you know, old, older versions of ITIL have been imparting on these teams, for example, whether that's by the letter of the, the, the wording or not, it, it has happened and we have to recognize it. There's a lot that established service support functions can bring here to make the DevOps team's jobs better. If we help them to deliver more code, deploy it faster, take work away from them, that's an easy selling point. So the examples of things that IT service management do well, you know, we, we understand that business context. You, if you have solid tooling around discovery that can map your services and you can draw the connections between old and new technology and different customer front ends and different applications and different services to understand what happens when the customer clicks any given button on any given system, that is information that is absolute dynamite to people in the DevOps world trying to do, decide where to innovate, where to invest, what challenges can be deferred, what issues definitely have to be fixed now. There's also the scaling element. I, I think one thing that service management has done very well for decades now is, is shift the front line of IT service from what, when I started my career some almost 25 years ago was barely better than sticky notes to you know, a really strongly professionalized customer service infrastructure with self-service, with cognitive tools, with, with really smart software for the frontline service agent. That kind of thing, again, helps us 
if we work well together with DevOps teams to take work off their hands that is not their core innovation activity. We can help them understand more about the impact of any given item. Uh, and one of the things I think is really powerful is, is knowledge management. If teams can work together really well to identify ways of documenting things that were fixed, hopefully we can achieve that goal of only fixing each problem once. And after that, the service desk can handle it because you know, we, we've captured the knowledge, we've worked together, we've, we've provided something that saves that issue escalating to a development team in future. And then giving, you know, with all of that, we can help map that service structure, help people understand where they sit, help people to reduce their non-productive workload in the development space, get them coding more. So it's interesting to think about some of the ways we can do this. You know, some of the suggestions that we would make are, are things we've been doing with, with real customers and real tools. One of the biggest headaches for the DevOps community is change management. I mentioned that you'll hear negative sentiments about IT service management if you ask the right questions at the right conferences. The thing that will really stand out is change management. The change advisory board in particular is seen as a, a real problem. And again, it's one of those things that probably was never as literal as it in, in the wording of frameworks like ITIL as sometimes it was implemented. And maybe that reputation is somewhat unfair, but it's there. But one of the good things is, you know, we, with smart tools these days, we can actually help to stand back. If you con connect up the tools that the DevOps teams are using with the IT service management, change management facilities and tools, we can quietly behind the scenes help those teams with additional risk assessment. You know, we have this broader context. We can use that to understand what the real impact of a change could be. We can even quietly you know, base things on the team's track record. And when we are confident in DevOps teams doing a really good job, stand back a little from what they do. Another great suggestion that really is taking off is, is swarming, which is fundamentally about breaking down silos in the support structure. If, if you think about the sort of traditional tiered support structure and the way things move from queue to queue, that is really strongly against many of the lean philosophies behind DevOps. So one of the things that I would recommend you strongly look at is how to work in a less siloed manner in the support structure, use chat tools, use very dynamic grouping, look at the, the Consortium for Service Innovations, Intelligent Swarming Framework in particular. Those things will immediately help us to you know, shift work to IT support that does not necessarily need to be done by developers uh, over the long term. Use things like swarming to transfer knowledge, capture that knowledge, move things to the, to the support organization, and sell that value back to DevOps. You, know, you will have fewer support tickets to deal with if you work more closely with us. We will take that off your hands. And finally, I think one interesting area where we can you know, really think about learning from DevOps it is around site reliability engineering. That's uh, that's something worth reading in itself. It's it's a whole set of practices and and philosophies that pre predominantly came out of Google and and is pub well documented, free online by Google. But in particular, they you know, there were concepts such as error budget, in which development teams are encouraged to use their availability overhead to innovate. So if they have 99.9% .9 targets, that extra point one can be used proactively. So taking some of those techniques, you know, what if we if we take service desk agents off calls for a few hours a week because we have headroom within our, our targets like call abandonment and, and first time fix and actually deploy them to more proactive work, figuring out ways to you know, capture new fixes, automate things, work better with DevOps teams. There's a lot of learning to be gained from that DevOps world and we would always suggest that you know, it, it's not so much about copying what they do, but thinking about the way they learn their lessons. So that's it from us today. There's more to read uh, on our website here, and thank you very much for your time.